welcome back to Life Enrichment with Hank Ballinger. Today, we want to talk about one easy step to becoming filthy rich. That ought to be easy, right? That's what everybody's looking for. That's what we want to talk about today. I'm sure we'll get a big following from this, so stay tuned. It's going to be awesome. Before we get into that, we'd like to say thank you for all those who've been watching the channel, for those who uh, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends, share it on Facebook, really helps our algorithms there with uh, YouTube, so we do really appreciate that. Uh, also, the reason we want to share is because we, our goal, again, is to get people out of the rat race, to get people out of the day-to-day the -day grind, just trying to barely get by, to set goals, to accomplish those goals, goals that fulfill them, and we're going to talk just a little bit about that today. So, one easy step to becoming filthy rich. Isn't that the American dream? Isn't that the dream of everybody worldwide that's probably ever lived? If all I have to do is get this map, go to the spot that's marked X on the map, take a shovel, dig up the buried treasure, the pot of gold, and the rest of my life is on easy street. That would be awesome if it were possible. I'm not saying there's not some pots of gold out there. Maybe there are. Maybe there's some treasure maps to them. But generally speaking, that's not how people build wealth. That's not how they get wealthy. Okay, now I want to look uh, just a little bit closer, if you will, at this title. One easy step to becoming filthy rich. If you will notice, there is a question mark there. It's very small on purpose. It is a question. It's not just saying there is only one step to becoming filthy rich. Not possible. Not anybody I know. I know some wealthy people, but none of them got wealthy by one simple, easy step. Don't know that that's possible. Now, when you see a headline like this, I don't care if you're watching YouTube or any social medias or something on TV or a headline in a magazine, I don't care what you see. If you see a headline like this, the best thing you can do is turn around and hightail it out of there. It doesn't work. Those get rich quick schemes you see on YouTube and many other places, they don't work. There is a systematic way. So we want to talk about that today. Now, first of all, if you want to build wealth, wouldn't it be better if you were building wealth in something you enjoyed doing? So you want to build wealth in something that you're passionate about, something that, that you can relate to, not something that's very tedious for you and something that you don't really care about. You want to, do, to, to build wealth in something that you're passionate about. So first of all, if you want to accomplish your goals, it, your, your goals, first of all, has to be something that fulfills your life. Not somebody else's. Not first of all. First, it needs to be something you're passionate about. Something that, that really is, is something that you look at and says, and you say, this is what I would really love to do. And because you're doing something you really love to do, it's very possible that there are many other people out there in the world that it's also something that they would love to see. Maybe you would like to write a book. So you write this book and many others look at that book, want to buy that book and read it because they also find enjoyment in that book. And you are compensated for that. It's called the law of reciprocity. The more people you help, the more you are helped. So first of all, make sure that when you set out to become filthy rich or redneck rich, you find something that you are passionate about, something that it will fulfill your life. Very important. Your goals, if you want to become wealthy, 
must fulfill the lives of others. Now, there are many illustrations I could give for this. Let's look at just a few. First of all, if we all were honest, how much time do we spend on our cell phones every day? Our smartphones. We spend time texting, emailing, we're calling. Uh, they will do that too for some of you who didn't know that. But they also do a lot of social media stuff. We spend a lot of time on those. We, we uh, get on Amazon and we buy stuff or Walmart, whatever. We are, we are constantly on these phones. Very amazing tools. But... When we look at that, we say, do they fulfill our lives? And we have to say, yes, they fulfill many aspects of our life. Enjoyment, we can order stuff, we can buy stuff, we can uh, send messages, we can help others. There's a lot we can do on these phones. And so not only does it fulfill our lives, but it fulfills others' lives. When we look at that idea, when uh, Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak years ago came up with the Apple idea, the Apple products. Did they have an idea when they first started that they would have the iPhone, the iPad, and all the i stuff? Probably not. It just kind of worked out. But once they got onto that, and then when you take the computer, and then you put the software that Bill Gates come up with, and then you put Amazon that Jeff Bezos came up with, to order stuff, and then when you put the social medias from Zuckerberg and so many others, all this social media, when you put all those things together, all of these guys have enriched our lives so much, the law of reciprocity says they will be helped immensely, and they have been, some of the richest men in the world. But had they not done what they did, we wouldn't have the ease in life that we have today with the smartphones. So we really do need to thank them and they really should be and fairly they are compensated for those inventions. We are probably very thankful they come up with those. So if your life, if your goals and what you want to do fulfills your life, first of all, very important, then fulfills others' lives, you will be compensated for that. And it's fair. It's very fair. Now, in order to accomplish those goals, Whatever goals are you're passionate about, you, you feel others would be passionate about it also, you must create a system. None of this. This will not work. It will be hard. It will cost you lots of time. It will cost you a lot of planning, a lot of thinking. The book Think and Grow Rich, nothing could be more true. If you're going to build wealth and you're going to have a system, I don't care what you're doing, you have to come up with a system, a systematic plan. You use that system, you follow that system, and it will get you from where you are to where you want to be. Very important, you have to have a plan, an attack plan. You can't just willy-nilly go out there and haphazardly build wealth. Never known it to happen, can't see it happening. But if you do the things wealthy people do, you can be wealthy. Now, there is a saying in, in exercise, or if you want to lose weight, a, a lot of people have said this. They said, it's easy to lose weight. All you have to do is eat less and move more. And they say that's pretty much the, the idea for every diet. You eat the good stuff, not the bad stuff, the, the sweetening, the filled full of sugar, the high carbs. They say you eat good stuff, sensible meals, not a lot at each time, and you move more, exercise, walk, run, whatever, lift weights, whatever. You eat less and you move more. And they say with just that simple idea, you will lose weight. Now, yeah, I know you look at me and you say, well, you need to follow that advice. True. That's true. I know that will work. It is a proven system. It will work for you, me, and anybody else. But the idea, we want to look at this idea. Do less of the bad stuff and more of the good stuff. That is true with anything. Let's look at that as a setting goals and accomplishing goals idea. 
to accomplish those goals, we have to do less of the bad stuff. Now, if you're wanting to gain weight and you're wanting to become uh, obese or morbidly obese, then what you need to do is eat all the high sugar stuff, all the high carbs, just wear it out. Just eat, 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 eat every time, all day long. Never exercise. Never go out and work out with weights. Those things are heavy anyway. So anyway, you do all of the bad stuff, but none of the good stuff. If your goal is to become very overweight, but if your goal is to accomplish something, set those goals. Remember, you're going to need an attack plan. You're going to do, need to do less of the bad stuff. Now, what is the bad stuff? Just like a diet, you, you try to cut out the bad stuff. In your life, if you're going to accomplish your goals, you've got to quit spending time on stuff that's not going to push you to that goal. Whatever gets in your way and interferes with that, you've got to cut it out, get it out of there. You've got to do the things that accomplishes that goal. Now, when you talk to the people that are very negative, when you talk to the people that say, I don't do that. Oh my goodness, you're spending way too much time. Let's go out. Let's go over here. Let's go to the beach. Let's go on vacation. Let's go out and eat. Let's go watch a movie. You got to say, no, I'm not doing that. That doesn't accomplish my goal. You've got to cut out the bad stuff, the negative stuff, and be more positive. Do the positive. Do the things that accomplishes that goal. It will fulfill your life, and it will ful fulfill others' lives. You have to do those things, just like a diet. Eat less, move more. You have to cut out the negative things that hinder you from that goal. And you've got to do the positive things. Whatever those goals are, you know your goals. I don't know your goals. They're not my goals. They're your goals. You need to be passionate about those goals. And you can be. Now, lastly, do something. I don't know how many people I've talked to over the last 20 years. And, and, and I'll try to teach them about how to build wealth or how to accomplish goals. And I talk to them. And then... I see them a few months later and I say, okay, what have you done? Well, nothing. And I say, well, now, you know, I told you to, you know, go out and look for property and read books. Have you read any books? No, I just haven't had time. I've been working. Well, have you looked at any property? No, I just haven't had any time and there, there is, just isn't any property out there. Well, other people are finding property. Other people are reading books. Other people are accomplishing their goals and building wealth. So it can happen for anybody but you got to cut out the negative and put in your life the positive. Do something. Push towards those goals. If you do nothing, that is exactly what you're going to get. Every time you don't have a target, you will hit that. You will hit nothing. There is no target. So you've got to do something. Be willing to to start moving. Just like in, a, in uh, exercising and, and trying to lose weight, you've got to move. You've got to do something. It's, there's got to be momentum. You can do this. Do something. Set your goals and push towards those goals. And you can become Redneck Rich. See you on the next video. Mm -hmm.